What's up guys, welcome to Jew Whiskey. I'm Jeff. Today we're doing a review of the Galdrins from Douglas Lang. Interesting whiskey. Stick around. Okay, we're looking at the Galdrins today. This is from Douglas Lang. This is a blended malt. It's part of the Remarkable Regional Malt Series. Uh, from regional malts, what do we have? We have the Epicurean from Lowlands. We have Timorous Beastie from the Highlands. We have Rock Island for the Islands. Big Pete for Isla, Scallywag for Speyside, and our Galdrins here is for Campbelltown. Now, Campbelltown being an extremely small region, we do have a reasonably good idea where this comes from. I would imagine the vast majority of the whiskey in this blend is from Glen Scotia, maybe a touch of Springbank in there as well, and maybe possibly some Kilcarran as well. I don't know. Either way, it should be good stuff. Campbelltown whiskey is the bee's knees. It's the cat's meow. It's the dog's bollocks which is a new expression for me. I had to look that one up. Fortunately for me, I don't think that's an expression I'm allowed to use. I'm pretty sure saying the word bollocks with my accent is illegal. Also stuff like wanker and bugger. There's a few. It's very unnatural. Anyway, the bottle I've got here is batch three. They've put out, I think, six so far. So this bottle is old. It's from way back in 2018. And I always hate doing that. I hate reviewing bottles that are that old. It just means my review is kind of out of date, but... Uh... Shrug. I suppose batch three is just gonna have to do. Now, this bottle here is the standard bottling because they have a few out there. They have some like limited edition cast strength releases. There's a sherry cask release, probably others, but we're just dealing with the normal stuff today. Now, the Galdrins bottling itself, as well as the broader series, the Remarkable Regional Malts, they're usually pretty well received. These are whiskeys that take pride in being craft, so they're at least 46%. They're non-chill filtered, they're natural color, so they tend to be lauded by enthusiasts even by me i've been i've been known to give a lot or two i mean i don't have a long history of lotting a lot of langs but i have lotted a lang or two along the way what else not much else to say i think here is a picture of it on a rock very scenic very evocative aren't we a rugged and coastal little whiskey yeah i'm done uh let's jump into our review in the meantime <laughs> it's dumb in the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. As I said earlier, these whiskeys are always craft. This one comes in at 46.2%. It is, of course, non-chill filtered and natural color. So I always love these Douglas Lang bottles. I think they're super cool. They're dark, they're busy, they're stylish. And in spite of the 1999 Will Smith movie, Wild Wild West, I remain a fan of the steampunk aesthetic. I think it's cool. I think this looks good. Four and a half out of five. This does mention that it's not gel filtered in natural color. Uh, we get a blurb on the back. I think Galdrins is a beach that transports us back in time. Something about spiders, Robert the Bruce, ghosts of long lost distilleries. That's fine. Uh, we do get tasting notes there. The bottle looks cool. On the nose, this is very coastal. We get some mineral notes in here. We get some sharp fruity notes like peach, but it's a very screechy note, if that makes sense. Uh, there's also gentle peat, there's lemon, there's green apple, there's apple vinegar, white pepper, some vanilla. It is a bit tart, it's a bit sharp, but in a lively way, not in a bad way. On the palate and finish, we get a nice oily texture here. We get some vanilla and some gentle peat up front. This is salty, mineralic, coastal, peppery, and somewhat earthy. It's also got some green herbal type notes. This is a little bit minty. I get green apple, I get lemon lime, I get some citrusy soda, Sprite type notes in here. Maybe even a touch of ginger ale. On the finish, we get more minerals and some leather. Okay, so a bit of a backstory here. I actually have had this before, but ages ago, many, many years ago, a long time ago, don't remember what batch. And I remember at the time, I didn't really like it. Now, I couldn't tell you what the problem was, why I didn't like it. Like, was it too bland or uninteresting? Was it too young? Was it too sharp? I don't know. I just remember walking away, not feeling great about it. So coming into this bottle, expectations were not that high, but it turns out this is pretty good. It's much better than I remember it being. Is it a great whiskey? No, but it's a really solid craft blend with some legitimately nice Campbelltown flavors. And that's kind of exactly what I signed up for. This is not a perfect whiskey. It's not going to work for everyone, although nothing would work for everyone to be fair. But this one in particular, there are some things that won't work for some people. This is somewhat young, somewhat screechy, and somewhat rugged. However, none of that is a put off for me. I think it's got some character. I think it's got this youthful 
zingy charm to it. Uh, it's not like undercooked. I think it's well blended. But yes, you need to be aware that it's on the rugged side. It's on the young side. There's some sharpness. That said, if you're looking for a soft, gentle, rounded whiskey, I think the Gauldrons is kind of an odd choice. It's out of Campbelltown. Campbelltown whiskeys are not known for being soft and gentle. Uh, this has the Campbelltown spirit, which means it is it's not a pretty whiskey. It's more on the rugged side. This one is for the men with hair on their chests. It's for the women with... Um, now, what's fun about shooting my reviews in advance is I'll spend time with the whiskey prior to shooting. That way, when it comes time to shoot, I'll just like pop off those tasting notes. It goes out quickly, comes out quickly. But uh, once in a while, I'll come across a note and I'll kind of like zone in on it. And that can actually change my perception of the whiskey. After all, there's a lot of psychology involved in drinking whiskey. We're all a little bit suggestible. And whether it's something that I find or something that somebody else points out, I can zone in on a note and just think, okay, I like that or I don't really like that. And then suddenly the whole whiskey itself is a different experience. And that happened here. And that's not to say I didn't enjoy this bottle out the gate. I did, but when I zoned in on those notes, I enjoyed it more. Uh, I love that green apple note in here. It is very tart. It's quite piercing. It won't be for everyone. I like it. Uh, the mineralic notes in here really really good not mineralic like you would find in a talisker this is more like the mineralic note you'll find in campbelltown which tracks uh i really like that sort of sprite soda lemon lime note in here i think that's really cool and if you know anything about me you know i'm a big fan of coastal whiskeys this is a coastal whiskey so there's a lot going on for this one uh one thing to remember though is that this is not a mature or complex or very sophisticated whiskey it is it is a bit of a straight shooter and depending on whether you get along with the character that's going to decide whether or not you enjoy it. And what's nice about this one is if you're a fan of Campbelltown, you're probably going to enjoy this one. Uh, also, it doesn't just taste like a blended out amalgamation of Campbelltown whiskeys. It does kind of have its own character. And certainly you can tell the influence mostly from the Glen Scotia, maybe a little bit from the Springbank, but it does feel like its own thing. So I would say this is, in fact, a pretty singular whiskey. And for me, it's a charmer, but your mileage might vary. My score is going to be 85. Now, keep in mind, Batch 3, 2018, this review is hardly up to date and I can't comment on the newer batches. I am now much more inclined to pick up a newer batch, so that's something I probably will get around to eventually, but yeah, for now, all I can do is comment on Batch 3. This is characterful, it's raw, it's punchy, it's tart, it's really enjoyable, so I am recommending it. I think it's a good whiskey. Now, before we jump into value, I do want to say a quick thank you to all my channel members, all my patrons. Guys, thank you so much for all your support. And if you want to help out, if you want to help get the channel financially sustainable and independent, there are a number of ways that you can help. I have both Patreon and PayPal linked down below. Anything and everything helps. And again, huge thank you to those of you who are already supporting the channel. Now let's see if this is worth the money. I think we get pretty good value here. In my mark, this costs about 45 US, roughly 35 pounds. And I think for the money, you're getting something pretty decent. Now, of course, you might be able to find something softer, more gentler, more rounded, more complex, or even more mature for the price. This is a whiskey that will or won't sell you on it based entirely on its character. And I'm sold. I think this is really good. And I think it's better than the vast majority of single malts in this price range. And keep in mind, I'm a single malt snob. I tend to think single malts are better. This blended malt is excellent. So again, worth the money, recommend it. Okay, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, I want to hear from you. So have you tried our Galdrin's blended malt from Douglas Lang? What did you think about it? Which batch did you have? If you follow the batches at all, has there been any difference or any changes over the years that I need to know about? Uh, let me know all that down below. Also down below, you can let me know what you want to see me review down the line. And I will keep that in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.